good morning. Amongst the big changes that you'll see within a lot of the AutoCAD and other software packages is this recapturing of something that goes back a long time to basic geometric construction and that is this physical or um, intellectual concept of constraints. Um, if you remember, some of you who had a civil drafting class, one of the basics of design in anything is deciding what you want to do and then what are your constraints. In life, these can be tax, it can be perhaps money, location, uh, marital politics, um, or any number of different things, uh, balancing um, goods and bads of numbers of things. Uh, constraints basically are, in a geometric sense, are something that is going to confine or um, or affect the geometry of what you draw. And so AutoCAD has added them. They've been around for quite a while in in the parametric model or Inventor or in Revit, but they have added them to AutoCAD. For the most part, we will be mastering them more in Inventor and things like Revit, but we do want to learn to kind of play around with them a little bit here and realizing where where we can start using them, especially for kind of doing basic, thoughtful, kind of um, iterative design. So we're going to try just a couple of them here just to demonstrate for you. And um, they are in the toolbar here, of course, in the parametric area. Or if you remember, I'm going to close this up. Never lose all your toolbars. And if you do, the command is minus toolbar. And then you bring up the draw toolbar and you show it. And you right click on any toolbar to bring up a set of toolbars. And someplace in here, you have a geometric constraint. So that's what they look like on the toolbar. Now, uh, I'll be sharing this video not just with the uh, basic uh, the advanced classes in the second or third or fourth or ninth semester of drafting, but also with the introductory uh, class. Because in fact, though we will start with having you use shift right click, like many students know is so important, we are going to very quickly be um, exposing you to some of the other software, uh, partly because some of it goes back to the 60s, and you can't do better than the 60s. All right, here we go. I'm just going to draft a circle here, arbitrarily, and I'm going to draft a circle here. And I'm going to fix one of them, fix that circle to the world coordinate system. So that cannot be moved. And you're going to see the effect of this basically is in grips. So if I actually try to move here, it won't let me move it. If I grab a grip, it won't let me move it. But if I grab that, it will let me change that grip. All right, so we've done, we've drafted a circle. And what I can do now, because this one is fixed and constrained, I can more or less go to one here. And this is, and I'm just going to do the tangent one right away. I'm going to tell this circle that it has to be tangent to that circle. And you notice in this case, uh, the the software decided that in fact it moved the radius of this circle to match so those in fact were tangent and now if I grab this grip and move it over here you realize it will shift around depending on what I do with my path it's changing one through the other so there's going to be a few different you know permutations that will cause these geometric constraints and so the first thing we're going to realize is that in fact Geometric constraints are very, very often coming in sets. So let's say if we can add a set here, and one of these geometric constraints is to constrain trains the radius of an arc. So select a circle or an arc, and then we're going to constrain dimension line radius. And now let's see when we grab dimension line location. And now we're going to see if we grab this here, what happens to it when we move it. You notice there it is constrained it, right? It's changing the other one. Now we can try one more here. At this point, we're going to go ahead and constrain this radius. And now if we go ahead and move this thing, 
we're only going to have a few choices where they can be, where it can be. In other words, that circle here, no matter where I be, it's going to roll around right on that circle. So that's probably, when you really look at kind of fun design and how cogs and dynamic things work, that's probably the, the funnest uh, set of constraints, these kind of cotangency along with radial. One other great one, of course, would be the same thing rolling down an incline. So now I'm going to draft here a line going down here. I'm going to draft a circle arbitrarily up here. I'm going to fix, and I don't know that I can do that, fix, coincident, collinear. Um, equal, symmetric, smooth, tangent. It's probably not going to get this done, but we're just going to play around one more time. I'm going to go with perpendicular. So I'm going to draft a line here. So I'm going to draft a line here. And now I'm going to say that, in fact, this line should be perpendicular to that line. And you notice there it changed this one here. Now, my hope is eventually that I can lock this down. But let me now go ahead and grab that circle and add a couple of constraints. Again, I am going to constrain the radial, the radius of that circle there. And now I'm going to add a cotangency between, I finish the command. Always got to look at your command bar down here. I am going to add a tangency between that one and this one, and you notice it brought it down. Now as I grab this, try to move it down, excuse me, you can see that because I did not lock this line down, it's moving in a couple of different ways. So the concept here of degrees of freedom and the like and um, is going gonna, is gonna to come in that, in fact, the f next thing I'm going to check and try to determine is, in fact, that fixing or more or less locking something to the earth, right, fix. So I'm going to fix that. That's now fixed. All right, so now when I grab this circle here, right, it actually fixed one point. Kind of nice. So let me see if I can do one more now. We've added a rotation point. So let me see if I can now add another fixed point. Now as we grab this circle, it should be locking the line and letting me do basically one thing or the other. It's kind of going to roll right along. So this introduces you, those of you who are in advanced classes, to the concept of degrees of freedom. Um, and when you really get into a lot of design, this idea of constraints, they're not in a real physical world um, things like pin joints or cantilever joints um, within a, some degree of accuracy will say that something is not going to be moving in the X and the Y and the Z or it's not going to be rotating about the X axis or the Y axis. In some cases that's the case. In other cases it's going to limit the amount of play based on some sort of stress-strain relationship. Okay, so that's within AutoCAD I would recommend you go out and look at YouTube and look at constraint stuff and play around with this for at least a, a whole class, literally. Uh, but go between this program and, um, and Inventor, which is really where this thing comes from. It actually comes from something called SketchUp, SketchPad from the 60s, and it, it comes all, all the way back to the great inventors, Da Vinci and... Uh, Da Vinci and, oh, I can't even, it's too early in the morning. Uh, how about Newton? Um, but this fact that these softwares are morphing and coming together and they're stealing concepts and, 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 and routines from one another shows you that how dynamic this world really is in terms of drafting. So that's going to be one of the first things I put out uh, to evolving CAD. Uh, the website uh, being inspired of course by Sal. Y'all gotta know Sal and we'll see if Sal has anything to say about constraints but I'll definitely link you out to um, a, 
historic sketch pad video. 